What's going on? Travis here, TravisStetzer.com, TrainAggressive.com, coming to you day number seven of the 12 days of badassness. And uh, if you've been following along up to this point, it's gotten pretty crazy, and it's only getting more crazy, all right? Today, for day number seven, what we're adding into the challenge, top level progression is going to be seven strict chest to bar pull-ups. All right, that's going to be your top level. If you have to regress it down, it's just going to go to a chin above the bar, traditional old school pull-up, all right? Pull-ups, one of my favorite upper body exercises. If you're not doing pull-ups on a regular basis, this is definitely something you need to start adding into your programming. You should be doing some sort of body weight pull movement every single week, all right? Multiple times a week, all right? Definitely in just about every one of your training sessions, all right? Um, with your pull-ups, all right? Pull-ups are one of those movements that a lot of people are very, very weak at their pull-ups, all right? And there's different mistakes that people make um, in regards to training pull-ups that keep them weak and uh, keep them from progressing. So the biggest mistake that I see being made is people train their pull-ups to failure, all right? So let's just say that you could do five pull-ups. So you can get five pull-ups, chin above the bar, but you've been stuck there for a while, all right? I bet more times than not, you're going to failure in your sets, all right? So what I mean by that is you know you can do five good pull-ups, all right? So once you get to that fifth rep, that fifth rep is, you know, usually pretty ugly. You gotta really grind it out. And then if you want to go for a sixth rep, you know, you kind of hang from the bar there for a little bit, and then you try to grind it out. It's, a, it is, it's just a terrible, ugly rep. And what that does right there is it pushes you beyond that point of failure, and it just wrecks you, all right? Your body's not going to recover very well from that. It's going to take a longer time to recover from that than if you were to train submax with that, all right? So, for example, if you want to get better at your pull-ups, and this works for pull-ups or uh, push-ups as well, is avoid going to failure with your movements. You want to stay nice and crisp, nice and fast with your movements. All right, so when it comes to pull-ups, let's say you know you can get five reps in a set. That is your maximum amount of good pull-ups that you can get. So instead of going to your fifth rep, you'll just drop off the bar after four reps. All right, what that's going to do is keep your body fresh, and if you're doing multiple sets, so let's say we're doing three sets, you're going to get three sets of four, you know, with good quality reps instead of, you know, that fifth ugly grinding rep. It's going to trash your body. You're not going to recover from it as quickly as you would by keeping your body fresh, like I mentioned. So train submax with your pull-ups. You're going to progress faster over time. Trust me, your endurance will go up, your strength with the movement will go up, and uh, your overall reps will go up over time when you train sub-maximum. It sounds like the ass backwards thing to do, but trust me, that's how you're gonna get better at that movement, all right? Now, the other big mistake that I see being made is just form on people's pull-ups, all right? I'll go over some progressions here in a second. First thing is, is just focusing in on tighter form with your pull-ups. So, pull-ups, might seem just like it's an upper body uh, movement. It is an upper body dominating movement, but it's still a full body movement, all right? What you wanna have is total activation head to toe. That's gonna help you build up more strength in the movement faster over time, all right? So the big mistake that I see you make when people get up on the bar is they just hang from the bar. So there's no activation in those shoulder blades. So the first thing is once you get on the bar, those shoulders have to become activated, okay? What that's gonna do is give you more stability, all right, with more stability, we'll be able to create and generate more strength. All right, from there, what you wanna make sure is we're tight in the core, all right? So another mistake that I see being made is people get on the bar, and then when they start doing rest, they lean back, they extend their hips forward, all right? And so there's, again, there's no activation in the core, less activation, less stability. Okay, we wanna be activated head to toe. So something that you should always focus in on doing is being in a good activated position. So shoulder blades are tight, core is tight, 
point those toes, and it's almost like you're in a hollow position there. All right, so you're nice and tight, head to toe. It's gonna, it's gonna make the movement harder, but you're gonna get stronger over time. So here's an example. So you're nice and tight, pull over the bar, bodies tight head to toe, all right? So we're not swinging all over the place, all right? And once you start to lose that form, and you have to revert to kicking your feet and extending your hips forward, that's when you want to stop the set, all right? So that's when you cut it off. You want to be nice and tight, head to toe, stay in a good position the whole time, all right? So from there, let's talk about progressions. One of my favorite ways to progress pull-ups is with band assistance. So you're going to start off, you can't do any unassisted uh, pull-ups yet. Obviously, we're going to be hammering the upper back with band pull-aparts, recline rows, um, carries, different things like that to get the grip stronger, the upper back stronger. We're going to have to do a heavy, heavy dose of that type of stuff in order to build up that foundation. Once we do that, that's when we start in, start in add in our assisted pull-ups. So I like to use Performax bands. Obviously, we'll start with a thicker band, which is going to supply more assistance to get your chin above the bar on the movement. But really, everything's the same as it would be with a regular pull-up unassisted. So with this, you just put your knee into the band, get your hands set, Actually, I'm going to go up on this top bar, but shoulder blades tight. Even though my feet are behind me, I'm going to still activate that core so I'm nice and tight here, okay? I don't want to be totally ex extended here. Nice and tight with the core. Boom, chin above the bar, and right there. And the way you would progress these is you wouldn't go down in band resistance, which would make the uh, movement harder until you're cranking out 10 strict reps with band assistance consistently. So say we have three sets, you need to be getting at least 10 reps or more with that band assistance before you go down in band resistance. All right, so the thinner band, obviously going to be harder and it's going to be a progression. So you'd progress that way all the way down to a thin band and then you'd start doing your unassisted pull-ups. And once you get to that point, like I mentioned at the start, don't go to that point of failure. All right? Hit nice, clean, crisp reps. And once you start to lose the form, the total body tension, and your body has to start shifting around and grinding those reps out, stop it there and just keep yourself fresh. All right? And that's the way you would progress on that. And even if you're to the point where you can only get one or two good pull-ups in a set before you have to stop, that's fine. If, that, if this is a movement that you really want to focus in on, do the volume method is what I like to call this, all right? So let's just say that you can only do one or two reps in a set. So instead of just doing three sets, you could do three main sets in your workout and then just scatter in a few more sets of just one to two reps over the course of the rest of your workout. So you'll add in a little bit more volume You'll be working that movement, and over time, before you know it, you'll be doing three reps in a set, four reps in a set, and then you'll just be able to focus in on your pull-ups that way. All right, so you'll get more volume in, and it'll help increase that movement, all right? Another tip before I uh, cut out here is make sure you switch up your grip as often as you can, all right? A lot of people like to default to uh, the, the classic chip, where your palms are facing you. That's going to be a little bit easier because you're incorporating more bicep into that movement. All right, but don't always do the same variation pull up every single time you work them. All right, switch your grip up a little bit, palms facing away, wider grip, you know, palms facing you, alternating grip. If you have neutral grips, you can grab neutral grips. Just switch it up as often as you can. That's going to help you progress ahead as well. All right, so. Your final progression is obviously after you start hitting regular chin above the bar pull-ups, then you're going to start working your chest to bar pull-ups, right? That's going to be your top level progression with your strict pull-ups. Um, I often get the question, where do kipping pull-ups fit in? Um, we don't do kipping pull-ups unless you have first proven 
you have the strength and stability to do five strict pull-ups first, all right? Until you get to five strict pull-ups, you have no business doing kipping pull-ups. And uh, really, kipping pull-ups should only be used um, if you're actually in a competition um, in order to you know, be more efficient with the movement and be faster with the movement, all right? Um, when, you, when you got that strength uh, baseline down with the strict pull-ups, then you can go to your kipping pull-ups. But again, kipping pull-ups should only be used to go faster in the movement for competing uh, purposes, you know, within CrossFit. All right, so uh, that's my take on pull-ups. Uh, good tips and tricks there to help you progress ahead. But uh, again, we are on day number seven of the 12 days of badassness. So if you've been following along up to this point, it is getting tough, but stay on it. Keep on rolling. We're past the midway point here. And uh, as we always do, going 110% ham, live and train aggressive. I'm out.